Hello, we are called Team Unite in 2. I am Norman, the team leader, and with me are our teammates, Victoria and Kendra. The content of our presentation will include the mission overview, problems with our old robot and how to improve them, our robot design, which includes mechanical and electronic design, our program and strategy, how we solved our challenges and our competition experience. Mission Overview the mission for this competition is to be able to trace the lines on the map until the evacuation zone. Inside the evacuation zone, we are supposed to rescue the victims inside the zone and deposit them into the evacuation point. Afterwards, the robot should be able to exit the evacuation zone and continue to line track until it reaches a red line. Problems with the old robot This year at Nationals, we placed second and overall, our robot was able to complete most of the run. But one of the problems we faced was that the robot was only prepared for the case to detect opaque obstacles. We were using an EV3 control at Nationals, but we decided to switch to an EVN for this competition as we are able to connect 12 more sensors than what we could with the EV3. How we solved the problems with the new robot? We felt that our old robot was bulky and heavy and therefore we switched to EVN as it is more compact than an EV3. With more sensors on the robot, it can be more robust to the different types of obstacles. On the robot, there is a colour sensor that is at the height of the blue cube, and there is also a distance sensor that is above the height of the blue cube. When the robot faces an obstacle, it can be detected by either the colour sensor or the distance sensor. At Nationals, the obstacle was a clear water bottle, and as our robot was using a colour sensor, it was unable to detect it and avoid it. With a colour sensor and a distance sensor on our new robot, it can detect transparent obstacles and will be able to go around it. Now, we'll be talking about the hardware of this robot. In the process of enhancing the functionality of our robot, several notable modifications have been implemented. One prominent adjustment involves the integration of a distance sensor and a colour sensor to detect the obstacle, rather than just a colour sensor. We are also using EVN instead of EV3. This allows us to make use of the increased number of ports for motors and sensors offered by EVN, elevating the overall capabilities and responsiveness of the robot. We decided to use tracks instead of wheels, as tracks have the most contact with the ground, and they are good for speed bumps and ramps. The tracks also provide support for the robot, as they have a large surface area and can prevent it from tilting. Furthermore, when we use wheels, there would be a large gap between the wheels and that would cause the bottom of the robot to hit the speed bump when the robot drives over it. Also, we would have had to use gears which would have been bulky. Forward-facing colour sensor on our robot, there is a forward-facing colour sensor to detect the rescue kit and obstacle on the line, and the dead or alive victims in the evacuation zone. One of the considerations when we mounted the colour sensor was to ensure that the height of the colour sensor had to be smaller than the smallest object, which is the 3CM blue cube. Ground-facing colour sensors. We used four ground-facing colour sensors to help the robot with line tracking and green square detection. The two colour sensors at the back are for tracing the line while the two colour sensors at the front are for detecting the intersection. When the front two colour sensors detect the intersection, the back two will check for the green squares. Time of flight sensors. We use TOF sensors for robot navigation, vehicle monitoring and detection of the obstacle. We have eight TOF sensors on the robot, four of which are on the front of the robot. The bottom two sensors allow the robot to locate the evacuation point, while the top two assist in the obstacle detection and locating the walls of the evacuation zone. Using the difference of these two sensors, we are able to accurately determine whether the robot is facing the wall of the evacuation zone or the evacuation point. We have four TOF sensors on each side, which can help us determine where the exit point in the evacuation zone is located. Furthermore, it also helps us in the detection of the obstacle. There are two channels on top of the robot, one for the dead victims and the other is for the alive victims along with the blue cube. When building, we had to make sure that the channel was tilting down and must work for both cubes and victims, 
With it tilted down, the victims and cubes can be brought to the back of the robot to be sorted out. For our sorting mechanism, we are using a server that will be attached to the back of the robot after the dead victims, alive victims, and blue cube. Thank you, Kendra. I am Norman, and I will be talking about the software section of the robots. First of all, a general overview of how the robot traces the line. For this, we use proportional line tracing. Basically, the robot's color sensor picks up the raw color value and normalizes it with the other sensor. This is to make sure the robot does not curve in a weird way as the value of the sensors vary. If we use the raw values, both sensor readings would be different and the robot would not go in a straight line. For software, instead of using the EVTree LEGO Mindstorms application to program our robot, we used Arduino IDE, which is more versatile and reliable. Using Arduino IDE, we are also able to code our new robot with greater efficiency and speed. As you could just reuse the code that we had written before and adjust certain values as necessary. The structure of our code is generally similar to what we did in the LEGO EVTree Mindstorms, with a few minor changes. Now, some of the special imports that we use to aid us in our program. For the server and sensors, the default value varies for each sensor, and it will take a very long time to calibrate and find those values for each sensor. Hence, we use different libraries that we found on GitHub and the Arduino IDE reference page to obtain these values, thus bypassing the need for calibration and saving a lot of time which enabled us to fine-tune other parts of the program. Finally, our conclusion. In conclusion, our robot is on track to do well so far in both areas of software and hardware. For the software, we will test our code more thoroughly to ensure the highest score possible. For the hardware, we will try to make the robot more compact to, intake, to attain higher quality results. All in all, during our experience, we worked out all problems as a team and also managed to exchange our ideas with other teams. This was a great learning experience for us as we have learned how to be creative, as well as a new programming language, Arduino IDE. We really enjoyed this experience and were satisfied with the results. However, if we had more time, we would certainly make further improvements to our robots. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you.